battalion of U.S. 1st Air Cavalry clashes with North Vietnamese regulars in the central coastal plain near Bong Son. Heavy and accurate sniper fire, zeroed in by telescopic sights, keeps our forces pinned down and dug in. Supporting fire from airmobile gunships helps to drive off the Kong, estimated to number about 150. After the fighting, copters put down to evacuate the wounded. Two Americans were listed as dead. One was a machine gunner, and the second his company commander, who took over the machine gun from his fallen comrade and was killed himself. Thirteen GIs were wounded, four enemy soldiers were counted among the casualties. Tropical Queensland in northern Australia, where torrential rains brought widespread floods. Powerboats, amphibious ducks and helicopters were used to evacuate more than 4,000 persons. In three days, up to 50 inches of rain fell, isolating towns, ruining farms and drowning cattle. An overwhelming catastrophe. A Russian Mil-10 helicopter, the world's largest, is ready to show its potential at London's Gatwick Airport. Nicknamed the Flying Crane, the gigantic chopper can lift 20 tons. A bus is ready to serve as the experimental load, but the passengers got a transfer. The crane flexes its muscles, and this bus goes uptown, the only aerial bus tour on record. The Irish flag flies over New York City Hall at St. Patrick's Day, and despite near blizzard conditions, the annual parade is held. Irish wolfhounds make a noble sight on Fifth Avenue as skies clear and the parade steps off at noon sharp. Included among reviewing stand dignitaries are former Postmaster Farley, Senator Javits, and Governor Rockefeller. Mayor John Lindsay joins the high-spirited procession, braving the low temperatures. Senator Robert Kennedy keeps in step, along with thousands who helped make it another great day for the Irish. This French hero and leader has feet of clay. In fact, sculptor Bruno Marini has made him entirely of clay, just like the rest of his collection. Statuettes and life-sized masks of famous people are Mr. Marini's creative hobby, and some of the most familiar figures of contemporary times are included. Finished with paint and polish, President de Gaulle takes his place alongside other miniature dignitaries of history. In Salisbury, Rhodesia holds its first National Fashion Week with clothes designed and made there despite sanctions. A swimsuit made of briny lawn, it boasts an inserted halter neck and a deeply scooped back line. Kathy is wearing a two-piece play suit. Its fastenings are of cotton cord in toggle fashion. Pauline goes strolling in a casual slack suit of Cortel jersey with saddle stitching, raglan sleeves, and half belt. An evening dress, loose fitting with trimmed neckline and sleeves. A cocktail trouser suit looks stunning on Megan. The top has cutaway armholes and roll collar. The bell-bottom trousers are nicely cut. An evening coat and dress of black lace crowns the colony's collection. A credit to Rhodesia and a challenge to Paris. NCAA Eastern Regional Hoop Finals as Boston College battles a rugged University of North Carolina squad who score here. The Tar Heels, led by sharpshooters Bob Lewis and Larry Miller, break open a close game by switching offensive strategy. The first half scoring strength of the Eagles waned in the second half after they changed their man-to-man -man defense to zone defense. North Carolina wins it 96 to 80 and gets the call to face Mideast regional champ Dayton. That winner expected to go against tournament favorite UCLA NCAA two-time titleist with invincible Lou Alcindor. Championship form in World Cup competition as Switzerland's Madeleine Wiyu makes a downhill run with a bumpy finish. 
Nancy Green of Canada placed a second, but still has an outside chance for the women's title. And again, the finish line is the challenge. Austria chalks up a victory as Erika Scheiniger places first among the ladies. Heine Messner of Austria takes his run down the bumpy course, which proved rugged even for these experts. Austria's team placed second to France, led by superstar Jean-Claude Killy, who kept his balance but just barely as he literally flew over the finish line. A race against death. As workmen struggle to reach a two-year-old girl lying at the bottom of a 28-foot backyard water well, a giant drilling rig is used to bore a hole parallel to the well shaft, which holds little Teresa Fredja captive. The child removed the well cover, lost her balance, and fell in. The narrow mouth of the well prevented entrance by rescuers. The delicate digging operation was the only resort, despite the danger of a cave-in. Finally, nine hours after the child was trapped, a rescue worker is able to descend, break through the well's concrete lining, and grasp tiny Teresa. After pulling her through the tunnel, both rescuer Ransom Bill and Teresa are triumphantly hoisted to the surface, thus ending the gigantic rescue mission. The child was unharmed, except for a few scratches. Miraculous ending to a near tragedy.